Hey guys, what's going on? Steph here. So let's talk about logging in your web app, logging in your SaaS. We're talking about logging user activity, user information. It is so important to do so in ways that you may not understand or may not have considered. So number one, logging tells you who's using the system and how the system is being used. So with the current version of Studio Web, our latest version, we've implemented some pretty good logging into the infrastructure of the software. Whenever any major or minor activity takes place, we log that activity. We log who did what, at what time, with what type of device, and where we're located. So we know by IP, which we can track down to city, uh, we know uh, when, what, and how, and why, and who. And it's uh, such an important thing because it could be helpful in terms of debugging. It could be helpful in terms of uh, dealing with tech support issues. If people are trying to figure out, you know, what happened here? Why this happened? Did, did, did this happen? So, for example, we had a situation today where... Um, I'm not going to get into the details, but essentially... We had a problem with some of the data, some of the integrity of the data in one of the systems. And so uh, the administrative user contacted us, saying, okay, we have a problem here. We don't know what happened. Can you look into it? So we looked into it. The first thing we do is we check our logs. We want to see what's going on. And basically something was set and the uh, manager of that installation said, well, I didn't do anything. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't make that change. But when we logged into the system, we saw it, indeed in the log, somebody did actually initiate the change. So that, what that shows us is that it's not some sort of a bug that, caused, that corrupted the data in some way. It wasn't some bug. Literally, somebody went in there, clicked on some buttons, and caused that change to occur. So that helps us to debug things, right? It helps us to track down. Okay, cool. So it wasn't a system-wide thing. Somebody initiated the action because we logged that particular action. But it gets even better. Because we have detailed logging, not only do we log what happened, we logged what user account did it, when that user account did it, where that user account happened to be situated in the world geographically when they did do it. So And what device they used. So I was able to ask the, the, uh, the manager... I said, do you use this type of device? It happened to be an iOS device. And he said, no, I don't. Okay, so what happened, somebody with an iOS device logged in with your credentials and initiated that change. Huh, very interesting. So then we go in there and we say, well, did you change your default password? Anyway, at this point in time, the way, what it looks like is that the user... Uh, the manager did not change their, their default password. When we issue accounts, everybody's got a default password, and they didn't change it for some reason. Now, we prompt them, change your default password. They didn't change it, or they used some simple password, and it looks as though somebody logged in under their account, guessed their account, the credentials. That's how most hacks happen, by the way, just weak passwords. And uh, they went in there and made changes accordingly. So there you have it. So um, because we had detailed logging right down to activity, as I just, you know, IP and activity and user and time and device, it really helped us in terms of debugging the situation. It wasn't a bug. It was figuring out what caused the problem. And uh, because we had this, this de detailed logging of user flow within the system, it just made it so much easier to figure out what was going on. Um, that's what we do. In fact, what we do, we don't, we don't only just track particular activities. We track everything. We also track flows. We track flows of activities through the system. So, you know, where we start out, if they go here, they go there, you know, do they come back in, they come back out. A lot of this has to do with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, just management of the system, tech support of the system, user error is the most common thing typically. So as a result of this situation, first time it's happened in eight years, I am implementing a new protocol and a couple of new protocols to up the level of security to account for user error. Sometimes people don't do what they're supposed to do 
and things happen and then you're left holding the bag you got to fix it so what you got to do is you got to build in you got to build into your system protocols that will um, which will uh, mitigate for user failings user errors listen things happen it's not nefarious people can make mistakes you know I was at the gym a couple of days ago and I left my locker key hanging in the, the steam room you know, it's like, where's my locker key? Where's my locker key? So I had to run around. I had to, oh, there it is, in the steam room. You make mistakes. So a good system will have things in place to avoid mistakes. So I'm not going to get into all the details. We have a few levels of uh, security that we implement. More than a few, actually. So we're going to implement something else. Something that helps deal with user error. Anyway, so for example, in another system... Uh, with the soon-to-be-released uh, certification system that we're coming out with. Now, just in, just in case you don't know, we've been providing certification services to schools for several years now. And I've had people ask me so many times, Steph, can, you, can we get certified in the courses? Can we get certified in the courses? And we do have profiles that you can build that, are, that you can expose to the public and so forth. But we never provided certification tests and services to the general public because it requires extra levels of security. We built that system out pretty secure. It's got to be, the integrity has to be there so that uh, that people will have respect for the certification. And so that means the certification process has to have controls in place, some obvious, some not so obvious, that ensure that integrity. Now, I couldn't just use the certification process and system that we've been using in schools because in schools, it's a classroom environment, so there is a level of control and security in that you have teachers who are assigning certifications at set times in the classroom, people are being observed, etc. So there's all this built-in stuff. So we had to virtually create that kind of environment in terms of uh, security. So there you have it. Um, this is uh, just one of the issues. So I was at the gym today. It's more of a it's more of a country club, in all honesty. It's a gym, but you know it's got spa and everything. And uh, it, was, it had this problem come in. We had this problem come in and, and with regards to uh, strange data appearing. And uh, I think it was just a question of uh, of uh, people not updating passwords when they should. Anyhow. I hope you found this useful. Just one of the issues that you have to contend with when you actually run a SaaS. This is not the first I've run. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's, a, you know, there's the academics, uh, young nerdlings perception about software development and running a software company versus reality. What I try to do is I try to bring more reality-based education in what I teach. Anyway, that's it for now. This is the car in the vlog. Car in the vlog. This is the vlog in a car. I find when I'm in the car talking about stuff after I just had a little bit of lunch, I find that I'm much more... Um, this is much more natural me. When I get in front of my big cinema camera, my big expensive camera in the office, uh, it is, or living room, it is, uh, I become a little bit more dry, more formal. Anyway, I hope you like this style. Um, I'll have another vlog coming out pretty soon.